Welcome to the latest edition of Fundamentals, where I'm going to look at one of the most popular exchange traded funds on the AJ Bell Invest Center platform right now, namely iShares Global High Yield Corporate Bond ETF. An ETF is designed to track the performance of the underlying assets and deliver that performance minus its running costs. In this case, iShares Global High Yield Corporate Bond uses physical, direct replication to provide performance. It's designed to track the Market iBox Global Developed High Yield Capped Index, sorry about that, which consists of a basket of high yield corporate bonds that are rated BB plus or BA1 or lower, in other words, sub-investment grade, junk. In plain English, these tradable loans have been issued by companies that have less than pristine balance sheets and probably spotty profit track records for good measure. The ETF has over 1,100 underlying holdings and the biggest positions are bonds issued by American data storage firm Western Digital and US telecoms companies Sprint and Frontier. America overall represents two thirds of the assets under management with Italy and the UK the next largest geographic exposures as we can see here. Total assets under management come to around 530 million US dollars or 420 million pounds. The ETF comes with a competitive total expense ratio of 0.55% and a 12 month yield of around 5%. For those who put faith in such things, it's got a three star Morningstar ranking. And do note that the ETF unit is traded around 78 pounds a piece at the moment. So those are the mechanics. The question to address next is why would advisors and clients be buying right now and I think there are three possible reasons. The first is that 5% yield. Even if interest rates start to rise and government bond yields keep rising as well, it'll take them a fair while to get anywhere near that level. Second, this chart shows the maturity range of the portfolio. The effective duration of the ETF holdings is just 3.91 years, which is relatively short and may offer some degree of capital protection in the event that interest rates do start to rise and drag bond yields with them. And third, following the election of Donald Trump as US president, growth and inflation expectations have started to rise. This is potentially good news for high yield or junk bond asset classes, which can trade a lot like equity. As we can see from this chart, the ETFs put on a bit of a spurt since the autumn, although it's been a pretty solid performer anywhere, helped by low interest rates, historically low default rates, and that 5% yield. There are risks, however, as the ETF's performance since launch makes clear. The last year looks good, but it made much harder, harder work of things previously. During 2013 to 15, the prevailing theme had been fear of recession, even deflation, and that's a doomsday scenario for high yield, as both situations will make it harder for issuers to service and ultimately repay their debts. If the market loses faith in the Trump preflation trade and then high yield, well, it could start to take a hit again as an asset class, inflicting capital losses upon advisors and clients that would more than potentially outweigh the benefits of the coupons received. Also note that high yield as an asset class isn't always that easy to trade or liquid, yet the ETF offers liquidity and the ability to trade whenever, at least in theory. We've yet to see any sort of market stress, but, it, but if we do, it'll be a key test of the ETF mechanism. If lots of advisors want to buy or sell all at once, in the underlying assets are tricky to move along at a sensible price. Advisors and clients will therefore need to ensure that the ETF does fit with their overall strategy, target returns, appetite for risk, and time horizon before they put any capital to work. So thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.